Well, Nelson Mandela has been in hospital in Pretoria for nearly two weeks now. The 94-year-old is being treated for what we're told is a recurring lung infection and has had gallstones removed. Now, amid the high media interest in Madiba's status, government has been criticized uh, for how it provided updates on the elderly statement's health. The uh, National Editor's Forum, or SANIF, as it's uh, more well known, described the presidency's statements about Mandela as misleading. Well, let's uh, see uh, where we stand on this now. I'm joined in studio by SANIF Deputy Chairperson Nick Dawes, also the editor of the Mail and Guardian. And Nick, morning to you. A man is certainly at the center uh, of all of this as well. Lots of comments coming through about why the media wants to have so much interest uh, in a story like this. It is so sensitive to cover, isn't it? It's very difficult. You know, there's immense affection for and concern about Madiba, both in South Africa and around the world. So billions of people literally care about him and care about his situation. At the same time, nobody wants to be invasive. Nobody wants to put at risk uh, the care that he's getting or, or indeed his family's privacy. So I think that's something that's quite well understood actually by, by the media. And that's why we've had a very careful process of discussion with government about how to get the balance right. Uh, that discussion was leading to an agreement of, of sorts. Uh, I wouldn't go as far as to say a document, but I might be wrong, of how to handle coverage of Nelson Mandela. Is that correct? Actually, a very detailed document, okay. um, which was verbally agreed to by the then Minister of Defense, Lindy Wessasulu. We were simply waiting for her signature at the time that she was reshuffled mm. out of the post. But she, in fact, congratulated the media for working with government on this and building trust. And during his last hospitalization, she said she think th thought things had been handled well. The basic point of that agreement was as follows, to provide a basic minimum of trustworthy information and to provide a kind of a management framework for handling, for example, the need of broadcast cameras to get pictures of the hospital and so forth without invading the privacy of Madiba and his family. As part of that, I imagine, Nick, that it just, uh, to not disclose, and I know you haven't, and of course ENCA hasn't, uh, the, this hospital in Pretoria, that remains private. I mean, that's a fair uh, give and take in this. Well. When we had the initial discussion, in fact, there was no problem about knowing where the hospital was and which hospital it was. It was going to be one mill. We were told that we would be given a tour of the hospital. We were told we the sites would be identified where, where cameras could sit and shoot pictures from a reasonable distance away mm. so that there wouldn't be a kind of invasive quality to it. Um, not because people are sitting and waiting for something terrible to happen. That's important to understand. But because broadcasters need a picture and they need to be able to show their viewers that they're on the scene and, and that the news they're delivering is rel 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 relevant. Yeah. The issue you're always going to have though is uh, those who are against the idea will accuse the media of, uh, and I'll use the term coming through this morning, it's one of the big questions I'm asking is, the media being vultures, who are just waiting as you say for something terrible to happen. Is government not concerned perhaps that that's all the media is trying to do? Well, I, you know, I understand that concern and I think everyone feels very anxious about that. Um, the point that this agreement tried to address was to say, okay, we can provide some pictures from a distance away uh, that will enable people to understand that uh, the news media is on the scene, not in the hospital, not in the hospital grounds, but on the scene, that the information that's coming through is trustworthy. But what it also provided for was anyone who breached that perimeter could be thrown out of the communication arrangement. So there was actually a kind of a carrot, you know, you can, you can remain in this defined area and a stick. If you misbehave, if you do behave like a vulture, you'll get no further access to the area or to the briefings. And the past few weeks, the, the two weeks that, that all of us uh, around the world have been following this media and, and people watching and reading your newspaper as well, how do you think this has been handled? It's the question I'm asking today. How do you think government has handled this so far based on what your expectation was? Well, it's been extremely disappointing, frankly. And I think the result of the fact that we were clearly and actively misled, both by the minister um, of defense and by the spokesperson in the presidency means that there's now huge mistrust. And I heard it from many people at Mangaung, uh, ANC delegates, that they don't believe what they're hearing. All kinds of wild conspiracy theories are flying around. And that's the result not of the conduct of the media, but of the conduct of the government. Simple, trustworthy information actually spares Madiba, his family, and the whole country and the whole world from harmful speculation. Nick, thank you very much for coming in this morning to give us uh, your perspective as well from Senate. All the best for Christmas. Have a great New Year as well.